that Christ has set you free. So this empty tomb is all about freedom for us, freedom for humanity, right? And he says in Romans 8, 11, that if this same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you as a believer, it'll quicken or make alive your mortal body. How many want some quickening? Amen. And your mortal body. See, so my bones, my my knees, and so forth, and my joints need some quickening. Well, there's resurrection power on the inside of you if you know Jesus to do just that, to quicken, to make you alive, whole, vibrant, healthy, and strong. Hallelujah. And then to take it and release it on others. Amen. How many remember Silas Awiti when he preached here? Bishop Silas uh, told us a story about his own daughter. Her name was Eddie. Uh, and he told us that, uh, you know, he's from Africa, and that's what they named his daughter, is Eddie. Anyhow, she had had food poisoning, and she died. And Bishop Silas told us that he just went to the scriptures, and he spoke the word over her, prayed over her, believed God to raise her from the dead. And lo and behold, she threw up. And the next thing you know, she raised up off of that bed, and she was totally brought back from the dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you see, this power is not only in us, but it's through us Amen. to other people. Well, I have another clip back there. You want to show that one on that African man that was raised from the dead? This man actually died and his wife. Daniel was taken out of the casket and laid on a table. People started praying for him, praying for resurrection. Then the angel said to me, that he's sending me back to the world to go and warn this generation because this is going to be the last warning to this generation. As prayers was going on, then his heart began to pant. Life began to come in his heart. They continued praying, we were praying, we were praying. And so these things were going on. He began to breathe gradually, but his body was still stiff. In my eyes, I was see. I saw all hands was grabbing me. They they said to me that I jumped up. I saw this big cathedral. It's a very big cathedral. I looked by my right, my left, my front, and my back. Everywhere was filled of people. And some people were shouting, some were saying coffee, <laughs> some said mortuary, some said three days. I couldn't understand what was happening because I, my experience there is not more than 15 minutes. So I don't know okay, what that's all about. Right that's good. This man had died was actually in the morgue. And his wife took him out of the morgue, took him to this evangelistic meeting, and in a side room, they prayed over him, spoke the word over him, and God raised him from the dead. <laughs> That's right. Sister Winnie Owiti, Silas' wife, knew this man's wife. And, and so she's a powerful preacher. I would be too after me. God raised my husband from the dead. How about you? Amen. This is resurrection power, and listen, it has not been depleted. It has not been made obsolete. Absolutely. It's available to us in this 21st century. Still active, strong, and tangible today. My wife and I got to attend a Billy Burke meeting here recently. And a man stood up in the back and gave testimony that he was at a previous Billy Burke meeting. And he had, <laughs> this is many months ago, and uh, he had been healed of pancreatic cancer. Wow. Simply by people praying over him. Uh, a lady had had a mastectomy and, uh, months earlier, and she was prayed for. And uh, in that meeting, she went back to the restroom and checked, and she came back out and said, my breast has grown. The power of God, the resurrection power of Jesus. Lung cancer. One man had lung cancer. He was prayed for, and later an x-ray had shown that both lungs were completely clear of cancer. Glory to God. A lady was born blind, and she was married and had a couple of children, but she had never seen her husband or her two children. And she went to one of his meetings in Toronto, and uh, they prayed over her, and she saw her husband and her children for the very first time ever. And uh, 
At this meeting that my wife and I attended, there was a cameraman that had a hernia. And uh, while I was there, he was healed of that, that hernia. And he testified to it right there. There's another lady who testified that her name was Helen, and she had been healed of MS in one of his meetings. I'm going quickly here, but uh, in Indiana, in an Assembly of God church, um, there was a, a, a lady there and her husband, and the husband had been in actually a late-stage Alzheimer's. And he had to put sticky notes everywhere to remind him of things or even remind him which room he was in. And uh, he was prayed for, and, she, and we, they heard the testimony later that this man, uh, his, his senses came back and he had a better memory than his wife. <laughs> totally healed of Alzheimer's. So there were blind people, crippled people, all healed. And one of the keys in Billy Burke's ministry is praise and worship. He really tries to get the people from their heart to sincerely lift up Jesus and worship and praise him, as it says in Psalm 103, to bless the Lord with all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is a key element in invoking the resurrection power of Jesus. You see, Psalm 22, 3 says that he inhabits the praises of his people. It says that he is enthroned on the praises of his people. He, in one translation says he will tabernacle with us in the praises of his people. The atmosphere becomes charged with resurrection power when we praise him sincerely from the heart. You know, over there in Psalm 91, I like what it says there. Take a look at Psalm 91. Because it speaks about setting your love upon him. Setting your love, how? Through praise and worship extolling him, like we were singing today, be lifted up. Psalm 91 and verse 9, notice it says, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high of thy habitation, because, and then there's another because down in verse 14, because he hath set his love upon me. God speaking here, because he, you and I set our love upon him, what's going to happen? Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. Because we're setting our love upon him through praise and worship, we're invoking the manifested presence and then miracles take place. And what's he do? He responds to that and delivers. I will deliver him, he says. Praise God. So there's a, a reason to praise him. Set our love upon him and worship and praise and charge that atmosphere. And we do that corporately here in this house. Uh, and, and he responds because he inhabits the praises of his people. He shows up uh, during praise and worship. And as I said, people get healed and set free. John eleven forty, 40, Jesus said, believe and ye shall see the glory of God. That's so true. So point number one today, the resurrection gives us power to us and through us. Let's go to the second one here. Number two, the resurrection offers us an escape from the wrath to come. It gives us an escape from the wrath to come. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter one. You say, well, wrath, I thought God was love. Yes, he is. But look at this scripture. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Everybody say, he's raised from the dead. Raised from the dead. Even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. The wrath to come. Hmm. So Jesus was raised in from the dead to forgive us of our sins, to give us a plan of redemption, to wash us clean, to give us a brand new start in life, and to divert you from the wrath that is to come. He made it possible to escape future wrath. How? Oh, well, you and I, when we make him Lord of our lives, it says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, See, there's a contingency right there. Yeah. That he raised him from the dead. Do you believe that he raised him from the dead? Yeah, 
It says, and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto, or resulting in, salvation. So we need to believe that he's raised from the dead. And what's he do? We're saved. Amen. Amen. From what? A huge forthcoming wrath. It's imminent. It's impending. And man, it's terrible. You say, well, what is the wrath that is to come? Well, I agree with Adrian Rogers, who says it is the tribulation period that's coming on the earth. Exactly. There's a period of time, seven years. You can read about it in Matthew 24. In fact, turn to Matthew 24. Jesus spoke about it. Yeah, Jesus spoke about a time called the tribulation period that you don't want to be part of. It says in Matthew 24 and verse 21, Jesus speaking here. He says, for then shall be great tribulation. All you got to do is look around. You see the signs. Things are going crazy, right? Yeah. But not for the believer. Amen. The world's getting darker, but you're getting brighter and brighter. The world's getting crazier, but you're becoming more like a rock and brighter and brighter. And the <laughs> Gentiles are going to be, the unsaved are going to be drawn to the light that is in you. And the resurrection power that's in you. Glory to God. So he says, there shall be great tribulations such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time known nor ever shall be. Jesus says that there has never been such a terrible time of devastation and destruction and death as there will be in the tribulation period. And you want to do what you can to avoid that period. Amen. He calls it in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, he calls it Jacob's troubles. And you've heard about it. That's a time when you can't buy or sell anything unless you have the mark of the beast, the 666 number, and so forth and so on. That is the wrath to come. The seven-year tribulation period. And it's a terrible time for the unsaved, for the rebellious. Amen. That's what they're going to experience that. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2. Look what it says. Well, I'll just quote it to you. Second Timothy 2. 19, latter part says, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Why? Because there's a tribulation period. Amen. There's wrath to come. And you need the garment of salvation, the robe of righteousness. It's spoken about in Isaiah 61, verse 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with a garment of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. you got to have the garment of salvation, the robe of righteousness, if you want to miss the wrath that is to come. Amen. Plain and simple. Amen. Well, make it plain, preacher. I am. <laughs> <laughs> the summary is that Jesus died. And he was buried, resurrected, so that you might escape the wrath that is to come. Amen. Amen. And Jesus spoke about it in John 5. You can read it in John 5, verse, uh, uh, let's see, 28. Look at John 5, 28. John chapter 5, verse 28. And he says here, John 5, 28. Marvel not. Oop, let's see. John 5, 28. Uh, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. When the rapture occurs and that trumpet sounds, there'll be the voice of an archangel. Yeah. And what's going to happen? And the dead in Christ shall rise yeah. and shall come forth. Verse 29, they have, that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. In other words, those who, who know Jesus are going to come out of the graves and go up to meet our Savior in the air. But those that have done evil, who don't accept him as Lord and Savior, unto the resurrection of damnation. That's the white throne judgment that speaks about in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. That's spoken about in Revelation chapter 20, verses 10 to 15. There are 21 judgments that are going to take place in that tribulation period. You read about them in the book of uh, Revelation. There are going to be seven vials, seven bowls, seven trumpets. And Jesus said it's the most terrible time that you could ever imagine. It's never, there's never been a time clear back, way back in history Amen. till now. There's never been such a terrible time. But you and I will be extricated 